There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. I'm laughing already just because I'm so looking forward to doing Mel's tag. This is the Choose the Year book tag created by the wonderful Mel of Mel's Bookland Adventures. It's her very first tag, and I am uh, thrilled to be giving it a try. So, you choose a year at random or your birth year. I'm choosing my birth year. Don't tell anyone. I was born in 1966. And I'm going to do the five prompts Mel has, and I'm going to add a bunch of stuff. In fact, I'm going to start with some stuff about 1966 in literature from the 1966 in literature page. On February 10th, Jacqueline Susan's uh, best-selling novel, The Valley of the Dolls, was published in 1966. She found out which bookstores the New York Times obtains sales reports from to create their bestsellers lists and she used her own money and bought up as many copies as she could afford which prompted her novel Valley of the Dolls to hit number one earlier than it would otherwise have. It is apparently one of the best-selling novels of all time so it was a little bit of overkill Jacqueline Darling but that's true. Tolkien wrote a letter to somebody a publisher, I think, Roger Verholst, I'm not sure who Roger Verholst was, to express his concern about W.H. Auden writing a book about him. In other words, Auden writing a book about Tolkien. They were friendly, but Tolkien didn't want him to write a book about him. Uh, in March, of the novel Fanny Hill, John Cleland's Memoirs of a Woman of Pleasure, got two names what the hell yeah it has two names originally published in London in 1748 but in 1966 it was finally on band in the United States it may be the only book Donald Trump has ever read apparently it's full of uh, stuff sexual stuff also in the sense of putting away childish anti-censorship stuff in June, the Roman Curia ab abolished its Index Librorum Prohibitorum after 400 plus years. Sadly, the poet and critic Frank O'Hara was grievously wounded in a dune buggy accident. Don't laugh, Sean. It's not funny. On Fire Island and died the, the, the next day, July 24th. And yeah, those are some of the interesting literary things that happened. Let's go to Mel's prompts. So number one, choose a year and say why. So I'm choosing 1966 and why it's the year of my birth. I actually love this tag so much. I'm going to do multiple iterations of, you know, Steve Donahue's birth year and Barbara Pym's birth year. I, I'm going to go to town with this, but this is my birth year. Two, which books published in 1966 have you read or, if none, have you heard of? Okay, so first I'll look at the... There's two places to quickly check. One is this webpage that I was just on, so I'll start with that. And the other one is uh, Goodreads has a sortable table of the 200 most popular books year by year. So I'll go through those and tell you what I've read. I haven't read a lot. Notably, I haven't read In Cold Blood. I don't think I ever will. It doesn't sound like anything I want to read. It's supposed to be amazing, but I don't care. I have read Shusaku Endo's novel, Silence. I read it last year. I didn't like it too much. It was too churchy. It's about the persecution of Christian missionaries in Japan in the 16th century or something. And I just think those damn fucking Christian missionaries had no business coming to Japan. I'm sorry they got tortured. But I was so angry all through the book about the idiots that were trying to impose their sick religious crap on people that didn't need anything like that that I couldn't uh, get anything else out of the novel. Uh, right. Moving on. Sadly, I have read Ed Aidan Higgins's novel, Languish Go Down. It has the, the best cover of a, uh, any book I've ever seen. I've gotten rid of my copy, so here it is. But it was very disappointingly cold and dry. I didn't like it at all. So, so far, two for two of the ones I've read. 
I studied uh, William Styron's novel, The Confessions of Nat Turner, which is about a historical slave revolt in the American South, and I, I read it. I don't remember much about it. I remember that I didn't particularly care for it, but I did. I have read that one. So again, three for three. All right, let's go to the uh, Goodreads books to see if there's any others I have read. I must have read Curious George Goes to the Hospital, but I'm not, I can't remember. Um, I bailed on Leonard Cohen's 1966 novel Beautiful Losers late last year. It was a buddy read with Electra, and I just I didn't like it at all. So. so, yeah, we're not doing well for the 1966 books, are we, Sean? Now, I don't know why Teleny um, or the reverse of the medal is listed as 1966. Perhaps that's when it was republished. It's purportedly written by Oscar Wilde, but I know that he didn't write it. He may have dotted some I's and crossed some T's, but it is uh, puke-worthy prose, uh, a homosexually oriented erotic novel that's just awful. And people think, oh, Oscar Wilde wrote it. No, he didn't. I don't know why it's on this list, because it was published in the 1890s. And I have read it, unfortunately. Now, Saturday the Rabbi Went Hungry, I read a lot of the Harry Kamelman Rabbi Mysteries as a teenager, and I don't remember if I've read that one or not, but it, it's possible. I loved those. I enjoyed mystery novels as a... when I was young and foolish. Okay, so those are the ones that I've read. Next prompt. Are there any books published in 1966 that sound interesting and would I read them now? Yes, quite a few. Chinua Achabe had a novel published in 1966, A Man of the People. It doesn't actually sound all that great, but I would be interested to check it out once I've read the trilogy. It's not part of the trilogy that starts with uh, Things Fall Apart. It's uh, called A Man of the People, and it is about a teacher in a fictional country closely resembling post-colonial Nigeria. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I would check it out for sure, because I loved Things Fall Apart. Similarly, a lot of the writers that I want to read from that books published in 1966 are from Nigeria. Elichi Amadi, the concubine, considered a classic of Nigerian literature. Uh, set in a remote East Nigerian village, it's about a woman of great dignity and beauty who inadvertently brings suffering and death to all her lovers. Maybe a precursor for I, My Sister is a Serial Killer or whatever that novel is. I have never read John Fowle's debut, The Magus, and uh, I'd like to someday, so it was published in 1966. Someday I should read Daniel Key's Flowers for Algernon, also a 1966 book. Bernard Malamud's The Fixer sounds interesting. It won the National Book Award. It's based on the true story of Mendel Bayless, a show trial in 1913 in Russia. Uh, falsely accused uh, Jew that was imprisoned in Tsarist Russia. Apparently the family members, descendants of the man accused Malamud of plagiarism, but it is a famous novel. I have yet to read anything by Thomas Pynchon, The Crying of Lot 49. Is that his little one? Yes, I would try The Little One, and it was published in 1966. I've never read any Jean Rhys, Wild Sargasso Sea. Sounds just amazing. I have not read anything by Paul Scott, his famous Raj Quartet about the final days of the British Raj, and the first in the series, The Jewel in the Crown, published 1966. I've heard good things about it. I would love to read it. An Indian writer, Hindi language writer, Krishna Sobti, a woman born in 1925 in Punjab, died, in, died just earlier this year, age 93, and she had a novel her most famous novel, apparently, Mitro Marajani, which in English is called To Hell With You, Mitro. <laughs> Hard to find. You can find used copies. And it's about, among many other things, a women's sexuality in India. And so that sounds fabulous. Uh, Patrick White had a novel published in 1966, The Solid Mandela. I don't have never heard anything about him that makes me want to read his fiction. I know Ange, I think, is reading a book by him right now. But So that's it from the uh, Wikipedia list. See what else comes up on the Goodreads list. Season of Migration to the North by Tayeb Sally. Camel of what Camel reads. Raved about it. He read it just a few months ago, and I added it to my TBR. 
The protagonist returns to his village along the Nile in the Sudan after studying abroad, eager to make a contribution to the new post-colonial life of his country. With recent events in Sudan, that is all the more topical, but Camel's review really intrigued me. I have never read The Proud Tower by Barbara Tuckman, a non-fiction portrait of the world before the First World War. I think it was her breakout popular history book. I have, I think I have uh, audible audio of that. A Bosnian writer I've never heard of, Mesa Salimovic. His novel Death and the Dervish was published in 1966. And it's about a dervish residing in an Islamic monastery in Sarajevo in the 18th century. Wow. Yes, that, I'm putting that one on my list. An African-American novel by a female writer, Margaret Walker's Jubilee, sounds very interesting. I encountered her a little bit. She came up at least briefly in the uh, Zora Neale Hurston biography. Uh, the protagonist is the child of a white plantation owner and one of his slaves. Wendell Berry had a novel, I presume it's a novel, A Place on Earth, published in 1966. I read one by him late last year, Hannah Coulter, that I loved. And so I would try this. Um, a Canadian novel, A Jest of God by Margaret Lawrence, was published in 1966, and I have never read it. Um, it's a classic of Canadian literature, and I, what I have read by her I really liked. I want to read and reread everything by her in the next few years. Another a Nigerian novel by a female writer, Eferu by Flora Nwapa. Um, there's not much of a description, but it's a, a groundbreaking novel. I think it was one of the first novels by an African female writer published in English. That's it. Okay. That's quite a bunch. Uh, number four, most obscure sounding book. Well, I just came across it, so it's book number 104 on the Goodreads list, and that is Purity and Danger, an Analysis of Concepts of Pollution and Taboo by Mary Douglas. So that's the 104th most popular book published in 1966. What the hell is that about? Mary Douglas. Looks like she was maybe an anthropologist, some kind of social scientist. And in this book, she examines the theme of purity as being one at the heart of every society. I don't think I want to read it, but that's the one that jumped out at me as the most obscure. The strangest book cover. Um, I didn't find a lot that were strange. I mean, there's a whole bunch of sci-fi and st stuff like that that I didn't look at, but... I thought the debut, maybe it's the debut cover, first edition cover of John Fowles' The Magus, I thought was strange and wonderful, so here it is. All right, that's it. So that was fabulously good fun. Thank you, Mel, for tagging me. And I'm going to tag a bunch of people. Mel tagged half of BookTube, so I'm going to tag the few she didn't catch. And all of these, almost all of these, are new BookTubers or BookTubers that I think don't have the subscriber count that they deserve. I'm not going to take the time to shout them out other than the fact that I'm tagging them. I'm putting a link to their channel and you should check them out. So Sarah at Hardcover Hearts, very new. Her channel went live yesterday at the time that I filmed this. Rashmika Likes Books. Kathy Trithart, happy birthday. Brian of Bookish. Maria of MH Books. Amy Gets Lit. Ula Goodnison. Greg of Supposedly Fun, Lacey at Turn the Page, Angie from Literary Labors, and Juan at Bookish Islander, which reminded me that even though he has lots of subscribers, he still deserves more. Juan of Just One Reader. All right, there you go. And I'm throwing this open to anybody else that might like to do it. Don't tell anybody how old I am. Thanks for watching. Oh.